Ten time worry. Ten time worry. Ten time worry. Regai mas we and not our ne fungwa zumu yo mangu. Zinzikwen me mwari. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Jah of our creation. Ten time worry. Ten time worry. Ten time worry. Mwari kumbure rai Africa, ngai simuzire sitarayo, nzwa imeteuro yedu, isumuria yo itumuria ko, uya moya uya moya kumbure re, uya moya uya moya muzbene, isumuria yo itumuria ko. Tena mwari, tena mwari, tena mwari, mwari. Ja, God bless Africa. Yeah. Lift up the name of Africa on high. Yeah. Hear our humble prayers, O Mwari, O Ja. Yeah. We, the family of Africa. Yeah. We, this family of Africa. Yeah. Come, great spirit, come. Come and bless us. Yeah. Come, great spirit, come. Come and be with us. Yeah. We, the family of Africa. Yeah. We, this family of Africa. Tendai Mwari. Ten I Mwari, Ten I Mwari, Royal Elders, Queens and Kings, Princesses and Princes of Great Mama Africa, I bring greetings to you as always in the most precious, powerful and bountiful name of our motherland, Al Kebula and Mama Africa, in the sacred spirit of our most gracious ancestors, and in a prayer for oneness hope and prosperity for all African people on the face of Mother Earth. Africa. To the God of Africa be the glory. Tendai Mwari. Gavi lives. Gavi lives. Gavi lives. Mosiah lives. Mosiah lives. Mosiah lives. Hello. Uh, blessed be the name of the most eminent prophet and king, His Excellency Marcus Mosiah Garvey. I said, Blessed be the name of the most eminent prophet and king, His Excellency Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Glory to the name of the most eminent prophet and king, His Excellency Marcus Mosiah Garvey. That name we lift up yesterday, today, and forever. For he, Marcus Mosiah Garvey, lived his life. He, Marcus Mosiah Garvey, gave his life. Sacrifices all. He said, I gave them all of me. I gave them everything. He poured his heart, his soul, his body out upon us for the 52 years that he lived on this earth. It, we could say he was born, born serving us. Because I remind you, beloved brothers and sisters, that this visionary, this visionary, was conceived in a vision. You didn't hear me. I said this visionary was conceived in a vision. A vision that was expressed as a premonition by his mother and his father who knew. His mother and his father who yearned for the empowerment and the liberation of our people. Who yearned for an end of this vicious, racist, colonial system sitting on the backs and the necks of African people all over the world who prayed and meditated for an end to the suffering of our people were to meet together was to find love in each other, was to grow in love with each other. And out of that love, they produced a great visionary 
whom we are yet to understand. The people to whom he came still don't understand who this man was. We still brothers and sisters. It seems as if everybody else on this planet knew who Papa Garvey was and the greatness of the man. And those who wanted to oppress African people knew we have to stop Garvey to stop Africa from rising and Africans from rising. They knew it. And so all of the world powers, the European world powers, the white supremacist, vicious, evil, a global system was studying him, surveilling him all over the world, brothers and sisters. You don't know who this man is, do you? He came to us and yet we don't know him. But everybody else knew him. Mao Zedong knew him. That's why he found himself in 1919 in Canada. At a UNI convention. Because he knew who this man was. And even as a Chinese person. He could get inspiration from Papa Garvey. That would enable him to do what he did. So he went to China and waged a cultural revolution. Ho Chi Minh knew who he was. That's why Ho Chi Minh found himself at the same convention. I said in 1919, I think it was the 1920 Universal Convention. The, that massive one. It's 1920. Madison Square Garden. Ho Chi Minh was there. Mao Zedong was there. What other one from India? Mahatma Gandhi was there. Are you all with me, brothers and sisters? It was because of Garvey and the Garvey movement. Why Stalin set up the Communist International, otherwise known as Coming Turn, in short. To study the Garvey movement and to try to ride on the Garvey movement to internationalize Soviet Union politics. You're not listening. Are you hearing me, brothers and sisters? Come on, I want to feel your presence. Come on. Are you hearing me? Yeah. I'm talking about this great man, yeah. this great prophet, Come on, my brother. this great king. This great spirit force par excellence that came through the universe to deliver us from oppression. And we still don't really know him. Why do I keep saying we still don't really know him? Because if we knew him, we would be a free and self-determining people today and there would be no force on earth that could stop the rise of the African but we are still languishing in the morass of oppression and repression and, and domination political oppression and economic exploitation and social degradation as the eminent prophet Papa Omowale Malcolm X puts it Are you all with me, brothers yeah. and sisters? Yeah. Now it's time for us to really know, really and truly know who Marcus Messiah Garvey is. I didn't say was. I didn't say was. I said is. Marcus, that's why we say Garvey lives. Messiah lives. We don't say Marcus, we don't say Garvey lived, Messiah lived, we say Garvey lives, Messiah lives. He said, I intend with your help and God's grace to continue, for my work has just begun. This is towards the latter part of his life, when they were about to put him in prison 
and he did not know whether he would exit the prison with his breath flowing through his body. Future generations shall have in their hands the guide by which they shall know the sins of the 20th century. He said, I know and I know you too believe in time. Well, we shall wait 200 years if needs be to face our enemy through our posterity. When my enemies are satisfied in life or in death, I shall come back to serve you even as I have served before. In life or in death, I shall come back. To serve you. That's it. That's it. Even as I have served before. That's it. In life I shall be the same. In death I shall be a terror to the force of, force of African liberty. You can't kill that spirit force. That kind of energy cannot be created or destroyed. I say that again. You can't kill that spirit force. That spirit that possessed the man we called Marcus Messiah Garvey is an eternal spirit. Yesterday, today, and forever. In life or in death, I shall continue to serve you. I will never die. I can never die. Because I am a God force sent to, liber to liberate the first people of the first planet. The gods and goddesses of the earth. In life I shall be the same. In death I shall be a terror to the foes of African liberty to the enemies of my people. But then he said, we shall wait 200 years if needs be to face our enemy through our posterity. That's right. We are Papa Garvey's posterity. That's right. We are Garvey's children. Right. We are the continuation of his spirit. But we don't know this. Because if we knew, we would be more Garveyite in the way we manifest on the earth. Let me move quickly, brothers and sisters. The ancestors just push that out as the backdrop to my message today. One hundred years of the Black Star Line, time to build the economic power base. Time to build the economic power base. This year marks the centenary of the founding and the forming of the Black Star Line Steamship Corporation. I think that deserves a healing, don't you, brothers and sisters? 100 years ago, the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League launched a shipping line called the Black Star Line Steamship Corporation. What was that about? And there's something we need to understand about the legacy, the rich and awesome legacy of the most eminent prophet and king, His Excellency Marcus Messiah Garvey. It's like in the last decade or so, almost every year, we've been commemorating and celebrating a centenary of something to do with the Garvey movement or with Papa Garvey himself. Are you all with me? Yeah. In fact, it's been going on since, 80, since 1987 when we celebrated the centenary of his birth. And every so often, 
we're celebrating a centenary of something to do with the legacy of the most eminent prophet and king. That's how powerful and pervasive that legacy is. Now let me just share uh, some words of the prophet. We're not going to go through the history of the Black Star Line itself in detail and its rise and fall. What we are going to do, brothers and sisters, is just remind ourselves of why it was set up in the first place. What was its purpose? What was its impact? What was the vision behind it? And how relevant is that to us today? And what it is that we mean by time to build an economic power base. Well, let me just read briefly, brothers and sisters, from a great illuminating book edited by our eminent scholar, Baba John Henry Clark. I want you to stay with me, brothers and sisters. I am not going to be much, much longer. I hope to take no more than 25 minutes, half an hour, to round up this message. But I hope that this message is going to jolt us forward in action. In action. Because I must say, before I go any further, I have been on Liberation Road, actively serving my people. I time it since 1983, when I started attending the uh, events of the Pan-African Congress Movement. Can we hear them, please? Yeah. You there? Yeah. Now, that, that measures 36 years of service. 36 years of service, brothers and sisters. And sometimes I'm tired of talking. Sometimes I'm tired of talking because our action, by and large, is not commensurate with the things that we say that we want and that we say we believe in. It's not manifesting enough in our sustained action and in the manifestation of what we build, what we produce. And it's time that our action catches up with our words and our thoughts. Are you all with me, brothers and sisters? That's where I want to direct our thinking this evening. If I may. Is everybody all right? Well, Papa Garvey, let me, do we want to hear Papa Garvey's own words? Yeah. Let's hear from Papa Garvey himself. On. One of the great things about the legacy of Papa Garvey is so much of it has been recorded in black and white. All right? So we can source the man's own words. And a lot of that was preserved by his wife, his consort, his queen. His trusted queen. So we know, we know that we can rely wholeheartedly on what has been communicated to us. Are you all with me? Yeah. Yeah. From the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Messiah Garvey. But here we read from Marcus Garvey and the vision of Africa. That word vision, I want that word to burn in our African psyche this afternoon. Because we have to understand what the word vision means. Vision. Marcus Garvey and the vision of Africa. And he quotes from Papa Garvey in the chapter entitled, Marcus Garvey in his own words, Why the Black Star Line Failed. Why the Black Star Line Failed. I would only say that I would question whether the Black Star Line failed or did we fail? Come on. Did we fail the vision of the Black Star Line rather than the Black Star Line failed? Because the Black Star Line was a vision that we needed to act upon and fulfill that vision. If it failed, then we failed to fulfill the vision. Nothing wrong with the vision. 
It's the implementation of the vision. Something went wrong. Well, Papa Garvey says, the Black Star Alliance Teamship Corporation that I organized in 1919 under the charter from the state of, uh, of Delaware was the great attraction that brought the Universal Negro Improvement Association millions of supporters. It is important to understand that after the UNIA, after the Black Star Line was launched, millions joined the UNIA ACL from around the world. So it had a powerful impact upon our people at the time. Papa Garvey said, listen carefully, this is Papa Garvey's words. I'm just blessed to be the vessel through which these words are coming to you. I feel honored. All I ask you to do is to listen, not only with your ears, but with your hearts. Not only with your ears and your hearts, but with your uchat, your third eye, your inner eye. Are you all with me, brothers and sisters? The all-seeing eye. Papa Garvey says, having traveled extensively throughout the world, Tenai Mwari, having traveled extensively throughout the world and seriously studying the economical, commercial, and industrial needs of our people, I found out that the quickest and easiest way to reach them was by steamship communication. Are you all listening, brothers and sisters? Papa Gavi is telling us why he had the vision of the Black Star Line and pursued the vision. So immediately after I succeeded in forming the, UN, the Universal Negro Improvement Association in America, I launched the idea of floating ships under the direction of Africans. The, the word Negroes is used here, Africans, okay? I thought if we could launch our ship, our ships, and have our own black captains and officers, our race too would be respected in the mercantile and commercial world, thereby adding a appreciative dignity to our downtrodden, peop downtrodden people. Are you all with me? Papa Garvey traveled the world. Papa Garvey observed as he traveled the world right. our wretched and destitute conditions. Right. Papa Garvey was not satisfied with our wretched and destitute conditions. He studied and analyzed the economical conditions, the commercial conditions, of our people around the world, the social conditions of our people around the world. And he decided that the quickest way to reach us was through launching a steamship for the sake of connecting us around the world and uh, forging communication between Africans around the world. Organizing trade between so social intercourse and economic trading between Africans around the world, independent of external agencies. We were going to be the, provide the agency right. for our own international communication, right. our own international social intercourse, our own international trade. We were going to organize it through our own agency. What a vision. What a vision, brothers and sisters. Then he says, with this aim in view, 
I circulated the whole world for the support of the Black Star Line. My appeal was heard and responded to immediately in such places as Cuba, Panama, yeah. and Costa Rica, and other Central American republics. Most of the people who responded were West Indian, that term is used, who could appreciate the value of steamship communication. The call to, dis to distant Africa was answered also. In the space of two or three months, the corporation, listen carefully, in the space of two or three months, the corporation of the Black Star Line was able to purchase its first ship, the SS Yarmouth, which was rechristened the SS Frederick Douglass. It was not until after the first step was launched in New York that the American Negro got to know what it was all about and subscribed speedily their quota to help purchase other ships. Within three months, let me tell you this, and you'll find this information in Race First, authored by the apostle of Garveyism, Baba Tony Martin, let's heal him, who left our earthly company in, 19, in, sorry, in 2013. Great, great warrior scholar. Great, great warrior scholar. I can't wait for us to do some justice to that man and his work by way of writing uh, his, uh, what do you call it, biography. I want to see a biography of, of Tony Martin. I want to see a, uh, what do you call it, documentary of the, the life and the works of Baba Tony Martin. But that's another subject for another time. The steamship was incorporated in June Nine, uh, 1919. By September 1919, the September the 17th, 1919, enough funds was raised to purchase a ship costing $165,000 within three months. Let's think about that for a moment. Let's chew over that. For one moment, brothers and sisters, in three months, this is in 1919, most African people were in the so-called, were confined to the so-called working and underclasses. One share was five dollars. Five dollars could be your weekly wage. But ordinary people came forward somehow. Mm -hmm. Within three months, we raised 165,000, which is worth millions yeah. comparatively, possibly billions in this time. And that's like owning an airplane line. Because you have to bring it up to the present time, right? How much does an airplane cost? We don't even know. But we did that in 1919. Under the influence of the most eminent prophet and king, His Excellency Marcus Mazaya Garvey. That's right. Are you all with me? Yeah. Let me just move quickly. My great difficulties in leading the Universal Negro Improvement Association and directing the affairs of the Black Star Line came really through the invisible influence that were influences that were operating against me all over the world, caused through the secret propaganda of other Negroes against me in impressing prominent members of the white race and their government that I was a bad man. First, my enemies in New York, and namely, namely Samuel Duncan, Richard Warner, Edgar Gray, and Adolphus Domingo, may they burn and roast in hell, 
That's, that, that's our edit, brothers and sisters. Did everything in to influence the district attorney's office of New York to prevent me carrying out the idea of launching ships for the Negro race. Come on, my and then he names this blighter, Mr. Edwin P. Kilroy. In fact, it was me that Papa Garvey made public the idea of launching these ships. Within days, he was summoned to the district attorney's office yeah. and threatened. And Papa, Garvey, Papa Garvey's response was, we are going to launch this, this ship, these ships, and float these ships even if it had to be in a sea of blood. Yeah. I want you to get a feel of this man. The determination. And all this is about the love that he had for us. His hatred for the oppression that we were suffering as a people. And his determination to end that suffering right here, right now. That's what I love about Papa God. The here and now. The here and now. So he had that vision, brothers and sisters. And that vision bore fruit in the sense that we bought the ships. Mm -hmm. The Black Star Line owned four ships, brothers and sisters. And then the sabotage began, the saboteurs from within and wi without. That's right. Why? To stop the rise. To stop the rise of the African. Millions of people now joined the UNIAACL mm -hmm. and were ready to give their service, right. to work mm -hmm. for the empowerment of our people, right. to work to enhance the economic power base right. that the UNIAACL had begun to build. Mm -hmm. You heard Papa Garvey's words. And you understand, brothers and sisters, that it was independent, international, economic, trading, and social intercourse that was behind the vision. Are you all with me, brothers and sisters? We understand this. And if we did it in 1919, we must ask ourselves, why are we not doing it today? We have more today than we had a hundred and somewhat years ago. What's that, 130 years ago? No, hold on. Where are we now? 100 years. 100, 100 sorry. years. 100 years. Centenary. Centenary. That's what, that's what centenary means, right? 100. It's not my language, brothers and sisters, so I just have to clarify as I go along. Alien now. Tendai Mwari. Now my question to you, brothers and sisters, in the last 15 minutes or so of my message this afternoon, I don't want to labor the point. I don't want to stand here a minute longer than I need to stand here, brothers and sisters. Because right now I am tired of talking. It might surprise you to hear Brother Lida Bandaka say, I'm tired of talking. The amount of that that I've done over the years. But honestly, brothers and sisters, and it's not so much being tired of talking, it's talking without action. It's the words without the productivity that's killing my spirit. I can't deal with it anymore. It's the betrayal. Papa Garvey was betrayed. And when we talk about betrayal, betrayal only happens from within. Betrayal doesn't happen from without, brothers and sisters. The enemies are oppressors. Oppressors oppress. 
They don't betray, they oppress. That's what they are there to do, oppress. But betrayal happens from within. From the family, the community, the organization. It happens from within. By selfish people. Self-seeking individuals, opportunists. But, brothers and sisters, there's an African saying that Mwari, God is not celebrated until the voice of the righteous is heard. You see, evil can only prevail where good people remain silent and inert. Are you all with me? Are you all with me, brothers and sisters? We can't sit back if we count ourselves amongst the righteous hmm. and saying that is not a pompous position no. it is saying I am an honest an honest seeker of righteousness That's right. if we count ourselves among the seekers of righteousness then why do we allow Come on. Come the betrayers Come on. the deceivers yeah. the liars the opportunists why do we allow them to prevail why, brothers and sisters? We even reward them sometimes for their misdeeds. We have a talent for rewarding sellouts among us. Bring the word, my brother. Bring the word. Bring the word. Truth time. Truth time. Deceive us, we reward them. We heal them, we congratulate them. We big them up. We give them platforms. Especially them come on TV. Yeah, man. <laughs> no, once Bakra recognize them, once European institutions recognize them, they can't do no wrong. Mm-hmm. Once they come from white man radio, white man TV, they can't do no wrong. Because we just want to be recognized. Right. Papa Garvey wasn't into that. No. No. We must build our own agencies yeah, and man. we survive and we prosper through our own agency. That's right. That's what, the, that's what the Black Star Line Steamship Corporation was about. Time to build the economic power base. Time to build the African economic power base. Now what do we mean by economic power base? What is an economy? Well, an economy is a system a system of economic activity that serves an organization of people, a collective of people, a social group, a social order. So we need to build an economic system that serves our interest. What is economics? I hear you ask. What is economics? Anybody can tell me what economics is? We've got to understand, brothers and sisters, that economics is how a people organize their human and natural resources towards the production, exchange, and distribution of goods and services to meet their own needs. Right. I don't know if you're with me, brothers and sisters. Anybody falling asleep? Yes. Let, me, let me give you that again. We're talking about systems. Okay? You know, a system is a complex network of component parts that are working towards a common end. Are you all with me? Working interactively. Yeah? Towards a common end. We're talking about an economic system. What is an economy? What is economics? We said economy is an organized economic system. What is economics? Economics is how a people organize 
the human and natural resources towards the production, exchange, and distribution of goods and services to meet their own needs. So it starts with a people. A people who recognize themselves as one entity. One sovereign entity. It underlies the principle of self-reliance and self-determination. Are you listening to me, brothers and sisters? And so we recognize that we are one people. Do we, brothers and sisters? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. We recognize that we are one people. So first we need to organize ourselves into one collective body. That means that we have to we have to and we have to organize administratively. We have to organize a bureaucratic system. Are you all with me brothers and sisters? A social order we have to have a social order where we are governed by a body of principles. We have to sign up, brothers and sisters, to that program. We all have to sign up for that program. We have to determine how we govern ourselves. How are we governed as a body of people? Call it a nation of people. Call it a community of people. We might say we'll start with community and work towards nation then. But we must organize as a collective social entity. And then, in order to be able to feed ourselves, clothe ourselves, in order to shelter ourselves, in order to educate ourselves, in order to advance our capacity for the use of science and technology, in order to promote our own health care, we need to be economically lucrative, successful, viable. So we need a viable economic system a system that enables us brothers and sisters to pool our financial resources pool our financial resources and channel that towards enabling us to own our own labor and our own natural resources now time doesn't allow for me to uh, expand on that too much because we need to round up. We need to go to the next phase of the ceremony. But I hope brothers and sisters understand where I'm going so far. This is what we need to be doing. We need to recognize ourselves as a national entity and organize ourselves as a national entity and then establish the economic system to sustain us as a national entity. You know, this is what we tried with the interim National African People's bring Parliament. Word, bring the word. Bring the word. That was a vision that we had. It was a Garveyite vision. Yeah, There's no yeah. secret about the fact that it was a Garveyite vision. No. Right? And I would say, brothers and sisters, and I'll leave it there, I'll simply say the reason why It imploded the way it did at the time that it did is because of acts of self-centered, self-interest, treachery and betrayal. I'll just say that, brothers and sisters, and leave it there for the time being. We had momentum, brothers and sisters. When we had the first gathering to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the New Cross, Massacre. We had momentum when 400 people came out for the, for the rally. Over 100 of us marched before the rally. We had momentum, brothers and sisters. 
right? We had momentum during the, uh, the uprisings in 2011 when we called a meeting at Baba Huey Andrews Church Hall where over 200 people gathered standing room only and where we were able to deliver a message in defense of our young people the integrity of our young people and in defense of Mark Duggan who was an innocent African young man who was blown to death who did not have a gun in his hand when he was blasted to death don't forget that don't forget that we had momentum then brothers and sisters but just as in the case of the UNIA the saboteurs were to have their way and there was a disgraceful public disorder act of public disorder that is on record brothers and sisters absolutely disgraceful but there's no accountability in our community there is no system of accountability people can do what they like destroy mash up and still be lauded Now moving forward, as I round up my message, we need to build an economic power base. We need to be organized as a nation of people. We need a national organization of African people. That can start, brothers and sisters, in this very room. Mm -hmm. Just with those of us sitting here. To count sand, our ancestors say, you start from where you stand. Papa Gave was one individual on a ship with a vision. Are you all with me? Yeah. Traveling back. He said his mind, his brain was on fire right. as he was traveling back to Jamaica with the idea of starting the UNIA ACA. In a few years, in a few years, brothers and sisters, we had steamship. We had a national and international newspaper. We had a Negro factory corporation with, an, with numerous economic ventures. Manufacturing, That's right. retailing, mm. farming, yeah. agriculture, property. property. Are you all with me, brother? In a few years, we had all of that. And it wasn't just national, it was international. Papa Garvey told us here that when he launched the idea of the, the Black Star Line, Monies were coming in from all over Panama, Cuba, yeah. even Mama Africa. Monies were coming in. Mm -hmm. Most of it, he said, came from the Caribbean. And when those in America saw the response of their African brothers and sisters from outside of the USA, they stood up to be counted. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, it's our ability to come together and to pour our energies into a vision, into a plan. Because Papa Gav, the great thing about Papa Gav's legacy is that behind every vision was a plan. That's right. A plan, a program. Now, can we take this vision and put a plan to it? Can we, brothers and sisters? Can we take this vision? This is what... Now we got the black print of Papa Garvey, Papa Garvey's works, Papa Garvey's legacy. It's in philosophy and opinions of Marcus Mosiah Garvey. It's in Marcus Garvey and the vision of Africa. It's in Marcus Garvey hero. It's in, uh, no, 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 um, it's in race first. It's the, the, comment, the analysis is in race first. Uh, what's the other one? Message to the people. It's in message to the people, brothers and sisters, yeah? 
And what we also have is an adaptation of it in the manifesto that was intended to be the manifesto of the interim national African People's Party. How many of you have read this manifesto? It's, a, it's in draft form. It's not complete. But there's quite a substantial amount uh, of work that has been done on a number of areas, uh, a number, number of departments of nation building that we need to develop. And we also have the draft of a constitution. Now, I just want to say, brothers and sisters, there's a Global African Congress, and I'm pleased to see Brother Glenroy here. Can we hear him, please, brothers and sisters, at the back from the Global African Congress? There's plenty of good stuff in the Bridgetown Protocol right. that we were all part of drafting in 2002 right. when we traveled to Barbados yeah. to launch what became the Global African Congress. There's plenty, brothers and sisters, of documentation of efforts that have been made. We now need to put it together. These are very serious times. Africa, brothers and sisters, despite hearing that Africa is on the rise, don't be fooled. Do not be fooled by that soundbite. Because that's a soundbite that has been put out there by the forces of global white supremacy for their own purposes. And it has to do with their fight to resist the growth of China in Africa. Both are imperialist vultures that are swooping down on the African continent for their own, in pursuit of their own imperialist interests. I have no doubt about that, brothers and sisters. Are you all with me? Yeah. We are in serious trouble. The scramble for Africa is as alive today as it was in 1885, but it is even more treacherous because it involves other international forces. It's more insidious than we can ever imagine. In Haiti, our people are suffering. Yes, in 2010, uh, in the Democratic Republic, uh, uh, sorry, the, sorry, the the country beside Haiti. The Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic. In 2010, they changed their laws to very racist laws, brothers and sisters, that just with the mark of a pen, Haitians who were citizens, transgenerational citizens, born, parents born in the country, some of them grandparents, but suddenly, are no longer citizens and have to carry pass, passes. Are you all with me? Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm rounding up, um, my brother. I'm rounding up. Our beloved sister, a beloved sister by the name of Sister Arikana Chiombori, who is the, who, the US ambassador for the African Union. She speaks as an ambassador traveling the world, an African ambassador, and she's telling us there is no respect for Africans around the world. Nobody respects us. Why? Because we have not demanded respect. In fact, a better word than demand is command respect. Not just demand. We're not even telling anybody to respect us. We carry ourselves in such a way that we command respect. We don't, we, we don't even open our mouths. And everybody's bowing down to us because of how we walk the world. Do you see how these Chinese walk the world? They've convinced themselves that they are the creme de la creme of human, of humanity. And that's what they teach their children in their schools. Yeah. 
we can start right in this room to build that nation, to build that economy. It must start, brothers and sisters, however, with a strong spiritual and cultural foundation. Because right. that is the core of the African personality. Are you all with me, brothers yeah. and sisters? So I want to encourage you to come and join us every first to Mojo day of the month for our Shamira. Because Shamira is one of the building blocks of this African nation that we're trying to build. Shamira is the foundation of the African economy. I promise you, brothers and sisters, if you continue to come, we are going to work towards this vision. That's right. Are you all with me? Yeah. We're going to guide our people towards this vision. Because if we really love Papa Garvey, if we really want to honor Papa Garvey, the best way to honor him is not by repeating his words. That's good, but that's not the best way. The best way to honor him is not by draping ourselves in red, black, and green every Mosiah and saying Garvey lives. That's good. That's one way of honoring him, but that's not the best way. If you understand me, brothers and sisters, the best way, yeah, we can't have form without substance. Are you all with me? That's form. If there's no substance, then we are empty. We are empty vessels making a whole heap of noise, which sometimes we're good at. Now, what we need to do is fill that vessel. Less noise and more weight on that vessel. And that will come through organized work, building institutions. And the place we need to start once we have our spiritual, cultural program, once we organize, start to shape our social order and our system of governance. Then simultaneously, we're working to build our economy. We're pooling our resources, as Papa Garvey inspired us to do a hundred years ago, pooling our resources, brothers and sisters, to build our African economy, an economy that's going to serve African interests, an economy that's going to help us to build schools. You know what it costs to run a school? We can build schools, but if we don't have an economy, we ain't going to have no school. Are you all with me, brothers and sisters? Build health care services. If we have a strong economy, there's nothing, brothers and sisters, nothing that we cannot afford to build for ourselves. There's nothing that we cannot do, especially by way of leaving a strong and powerful legacy for our people. Let us work together and build our African economic power base so that we brothers and sisters only then are we truly answering the call of Papa Marcus Messiah Garvey who says unite, organize now or perish rise you mighty African people for you can accomplish whatever you will Rumbidzo Kunamwariye Africa to the God of Africa be the glory Tendai Mwari